Welcome to my podcast, What the Fuck Spirit. If you made it past that name, this is going to be the podcast for you. This is going to be a no holds barred, no bullshit, open and honest conversation with Maria Leggett, and that's me, about all things spiritual. It's time to begin talking in an open and honest way about what spirituality is and what it is not. We're going to discuss all things woo-woo, witchcraft, spiritual, queer spirituality, medium versus psychic, energy healing, light work, shadow work, and any other bullshit that people want you to believe because it keeps them comfortable. It is time for you to grow. Let's go. Hello, hello. As I as I go live and my camera comes on, I realize that I am not plugged in and my my laptop's going to die. <laughs> you got to love how this goes, right? I'm completely live and boom. <laughs> so let me plug this in really quick so that my laptop does not die in the middle of my interview. And you can listen to me like Brent and Grog as I pick up my cord and plug it in and make sure that my Mac now has battery access. Woohoo! Oh my goodness, you got to love how this stuff works. Welcome to What the Fuck Spirit Podcast. I am Maria Leggett Media. (laughs) I am also a fallible human who makes all kinds of mistakes. (laughs) So today on the show, we have uh, Reverend Rose Vandenenden, who I absolutely love and adore. She is one of my mentors, and she's probably one of the most humble people that I have ever met. So I will tell her during the show how amazing and wonderful she is. And she's going to go, oh, Shelly, because <laughs> that's how Rose is. Um, but she truly is amazing. Rose is a published author. She worked with Llewellyn and she did. Um, so you think you want to be a medium? I have it here somewhere. I actually teach using the book the same way that she taught me. And um Rose has done other books and we can have her talk about those too. But I love like, this is literally what she has for her own bio. So simple, but this is really her writer, published author, spiritualist minister and medium instructor, witch, priestess and sister of Morgan Le Fay, wife, mother, actor, director, friend. I wear lots of hats. Many of us do. I hope you find what you're looking for as you explore. And she has this beautiful website, isleofglass.net. It is a blog that she puts on there and puts her thoughts out there. And I love being able to honor and talk to her and listen to her. She has so much wisdom. She has been doing this for so many years. And as I mentioned before, she is one of my teachers who taught me when I first stepped into mediumship. And I'm just so grateful to be able to have her on the podcast today and to be able to share information. So if you are watching live with us on Facebook, please post your questions in the comments for her as we are talking, because I love listening to her answer things. She has such a great perspective. Um, And I do mimic a lot of my practice and thoughts and, and my own belief systems after hers because She just explains things so beautifully that I was able to go, oh, I understand that. I can resonate with that. Let me take it. Um, And of course, she'll tell you the same thing that I teach because I got it from her. Whatever you do not resonate with, trash it. (laughs) Because if it doesn't mean something to you, you shouldn't hold on to the practice, which I think is amazing. Um, So that is who we're going to talk with today. I also want to share that we have Temple of the Sacred Circle, which is open for membership. It is my uh, online temple slash church. I am going to be a fully ordained minister on Saturday. I cannot wait. And um, this temple is the culmination of everything that I want as a sacred place to be. Um, I want to be able to go and do spiritual services and listen to spiritual services and know that this is a person who has an open mind, who looks at spiritualism and mediumship the same way that I do. I also need to know that I have someone who understands earth-based religions because I'm very much about earth-based religions. I do not hide the fact that I am pagan. Um, And it's really important to me that people be able to have a place to come and to find other people. So we have an online community where we can chat and share information. And I just, I love being able to do this with people and be of service, which is exactly what I was taught by Rose to be of service to people. So it is my honor and my pleasure to bring on my amazing mentor, Reverend Rose Vanden Enden. Hi, Shelly. Hello, Rose. How are you? 
I still call you Shelly. I course, know you're good. you're officially Maria Leggett, and I love that name, but I love Shelly too. So <laughs> I love Shelly too. I don't disagree with you. <laughs> hey, it's nice to be here. Thanks so much for having me. And I really want to know want you to know how much I appreciate and love what you're doing. And congratulations on your ordination that's coming up this weekend. I know thank you, thank you. that you are going to serve spirit well. And Spirit has found a lovely, um, uh, what's the right word, um, a lovely uh, advocate in you. Oh, and thank so, you so keep much. doing that wonderful work. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So see, if you ask me, I would tell you that I owe it all to you. <laughs> oh, well, let's not ask you because you don't owe it to me. <laughs> <laughs> so here comes the humble stuff I was talking about. Well, it's you know, <laughs> you don't all owe it all to me. I'm I'm very honored to have been a part of of your journey and a part of Absolutely huge the journeys of the many students that I have had and yeah. the people that I've gotten to touch over the years through my books and through the work that I've done as a medium and a minister and as a as a you know psychic and all of those things. So, yeah. I love it. It is. Um, so I officially started on my mediumship journey, I would say almost five years ago, right at five years ago, when I first took um, Spirit Speaks with you and Joanne. Yeah. yeah. And completely changed my life. Totally changed my life. And um, you and Joanne had really set the foundation for who I've become mm -hmm. through all of the ways that, you know, your training at Chesterfield and her training at Lilydale. I really feel like all of your students, I would say just me, but I'm going to speak for all of us <laughs> because I really feel like all of us have gotten this really well-rounded, beautiful education because it's the top two spiritualist camps, right? And I got a teacher from both giving me both. And so I have this beautiful, well-rounded education. And I just am so grateful that I've been able to take this journey and have you as my mentor. And I'm so glad that you see it that way, Shelly, because, you know, there are, unfortunately, in, in, in this work, there are folks who are working with, working from the place of ego and they it's almost like they want to limit the knowledge. They want to limit what they teach to people because if they teach them too much or they teach them all the tricks or whatever you want to, whatever you want to call it or however you want to say it, they feel threatened by that um, in some ways. And that's unfortunate because there's no reason to feel threatened by anyone who wants to serve the world in a spiritual manner. Um, and, you know, again, like I said, I think that comes from ego and I think that comes from fear, a fear-based um, approach to life. And I've never been that way. I like, I want everybody to go out and learn as much as they can <laughs> about the things that interest them, about the different practices that are going to help them on their journey. And like you said at the beginning, you just, if, if, if it's not for you, that's fine. You, you just don't incorporate it into your life and you say, thank you. And you move on. Um, so when Joanne and I designed the program, we, we really wanted it to be a comprehensive look at different, um, methods. Um, and I'm sure that that's what she's continuing to teach in the program. Um, I help, help out occasionally. I am helping out this weekend, um, guest teaching with her, um, in her pro in the program. So, you know, we're still passing on the word. <laughs> we're still passing it on and trying to help everybody who is, is wanting to do this work and wanting to, to have a relationship to spirit in some way. Yeah. You know, one of the things that I actually, I mean, I adopted many things from you in the way that I teach and what I say. And one of the things that I teach my two-year students is, I mean, I teach it in all of my classes and this really hit me. I think it was, I don't know that it was in Spirit Speaks. It might've been in, you know, when we started the two-year program together, but 
I distinctly remember you saying to all of us, I view my job as teaching everyone how to do this to put myself out of business. Yep. So that you don't need me. And that is literally what I tell everybody. Like, this yeah. is what Rose taught me. So I am repeating that, right? And I, <laughs> I literally want everybody to know because we all are born to do this. We can mm-hmm. all do it. It's you yep. can learn this, mm-hmm. right? And some people say, oh, well, you know, it's special. It's not. You may be born, you know, where like you were born more clairvoyant. I was born you know, or clairaudient and I was born more clairvoyant, but it doesn't mean we can't develop those other skills. Absolutely. All you need me to do is help you to develop those other skills. That's it. Exactly. And, and you ahead. know, and I know I was going to say, I, I have firmly put myself out of business because <laughs> I'm, I'm not, um, you know, I don't have an office space any longer. I um, sort of uh, stepped back from that practice of doing readings full time and things like that when COVID hit. Um, and that was, you know, along with spirits um, guidance, you know, that mm-hmm. I, I didn't need to be out there doing that anymore. There are lots and lots of other people who can do this wonderful work and who are connected to spirit. And my job was to, you know, step back and to look at my own life and to sort of circle back to some of the things that I may have glossed over, or I don't want to say skipped, but um, sort of hopped over (laughs) because I was so um, focused on, on teaching other people. Um, but I still think that teaching others is, is really important and valuable. Um, but I also believe, like you said, that everyone has a connection to spirit and it really is about learning what your connection is like and how you can nurture that connection, how you can every day work with that connection, um, and, and make it a, a centerpiece of your life. Um, that's what spiritual practice is, you know, and that's what I think all of us are sort of seeking. Um, even if we don't call it that, I think we're all looking for a tether or an anchor in our life mm-hmm. that makes us feel secure. Um, and to me, that's what spirituality is. It's sort of that seeking of that that closeness to creator, the universe, and to each other, because we're all connected, that, you know, everybody's looking for that. Um, And so exploring all of these things um, brings us closer to what we know to be our authentic truth. You know, whatever that truth is for you, whatever it is for me, and it's going to be different for everybody, because everybody's different, you know, and you can teach people how to do things. Um, and you can teach people techniques, but you can't make it happen for them. You know, they yeah. have to use the techniques, they have to be willing to put in the time and the effort and the energy to, you know, to have a relationship with spirit. That's to me, what all of this is about. It's about having a relationship with spirit, just like having a relationship with your spouse or your, your best friend or your Mm -hmm. mom or your dad or your kids or whatever it is. It's the same thing. It's just a little bit of a different kind of relationship. You know, so how much energy do you want to put into it? And not everybody wants to be a professional medium and that's totally fine. But spirituality and the idea of being a spiritual person, that's an everyday thing. (laughs) That's something that you do every day. It's, it's part of who we are. I think it's part of our DNA makeup to, to be seeking, um, to be seeking connection, um, whether it's connection to spirit or connection to other human beings or plants or stones or whatever it is, we're seeking some kind of connection that resonates with our own soul and with our own with our own energy. So let me just stop talking because you didn't ask for a lecture. Um, I so. don't know. I'm, this is this is why I love having you on, right? I literally love soaking up all the wisdom that you have to put out there because. I mean, selfishly, a lot of what you believe and what you say 
totally aligns with how I feel and what I think. And so listening to you just goes, yes, I really am on the right path. Yes, this, these are the things. So I love that you're just kind of doing all of this because I was going to say to you, you know, because I asked this of all my guests, what what is spirituality to you? And so you've kind of already answered that. See, and look, I'm psychic. Uh, look at that. <laughs> That is to this day, that is still one of my favorite jokes to pull off in class. Oh, you might be psychic. And of course, everybody in the class laughs. It's a big thing. Of course. Because you got you and Joanne. Important. I'm telling you what, you know, and, and I'll I say this to anybody, anybody who's listening, if you don't have a sense of humor about life, the world, your your even your connection to spirit, then it's going to be harder for you to make your way. <laughs> it yeah. really is. Because humor and laughter, you know, we always say in the spiritualist church, they raise your own vibration. Yeah. They raise the vibration of the space that you're in. They raise your vibration. And being um, laughing at yourself, um, being able to say, like you said at the beginning, hey, I'm not plugged in. Let me let me take a minute and plug my stuff in because I I'm a human being and I forgot and I didn't know my my battery was dying. You know, having a sense of humor about those things goes such a long way. Um, so many people think that you have to be so serious all the time when you're a spiritual seeker. And there's nothing wrong. And I don't mean to 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 minimize that feeling of sacredness. Um, but, you know, all the great masters laughed, too. Jesus laughed. Mm -hmm. Buddha laughed. I mean, everybody had, you know, everybody laughed because they knew in whatever way that that was going to um, strengthen their energy field. OK, and I really believe that that's what laughter does. So anybody who's out there be willing to laugh at yourself, be willing to take some of this a little more lightly because it will help you in the end. It'll help you to learn and grow more than anything else. It really does. It's definitely something that I've had to learn on this path mm -hmm. of, you know, being able to recognize my mistake, call it for what it is, laugh and just, you know, and I think one of the, one of the biggest presents that I've been able to give myself is to stop apologizing all the time for my mistakes. And instead mm -hmm. I say, thank you for your grace as I move through this. Yeah. And absolutely. That, it's huge to be able to give yourself grace because, you know, as women we're taught mm -hmm. from a very young age to apologize for our existence. To oh yeah. For our sure. mouth shut And to not do any of the things. Shush. You know, and that's just take white. up as little space as possible. Yes. And that's just white women. Never mind women of color, right. black women, mm -hmm. indigenous women, Asian women. It's mm -hmm. even worse for them. Mm -hmm. And so being able to finally find my voice, use my voice, which is why, you know, spirit has been on my case for the last three days. They're like, we want you to do 30 days of lives. And I'm like, shit. <laughs> <laughs> Well, here's the other thing. I will say this, and, and this is not just directed to you, Shelly, because we all do this. You know, you can say no to spirit sometimes, too. Oh, yeah. You know, and it's okay to say to spirit, you know what? I don't feel like I'm prepared for that right now. Or I don't feel like I've got that time in my schedule to do that right now. So can, you know, let's put that on the back burner so yeah. I can concentrate on this other thing. Or let me find... 30 topics that I'm going to talk about for 30 days and I'll start writing them down now. And then once I have them all, then we'll do it. You know, yeah. I, I really believe that, you know, I had a, I had a student once who said to me, you know, you say that you can always say no to spirit, but, um, it, it, it just keeps coming back. You know, spirit just keeps nagging you about it. And I said, well, that's fine. Let them nag. Let spirit nag you. That's yeah. okay. Because it keeps reminding you that, hey, there's still this other thing that is on the horizon that I'm working towards. And there's nothing wrong with working towards something. Yeah. But, you know, it's okay to say, I need some space, you know, I, I need some space just, you know, that 50, that extra 15 minutes that I have during the day, I don't want to fill it up with anything. I just want yeah. it to be my 15 minutes, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Um, but I think it's, I think that once you have that connection to spirit and once you have dedicated yourself 
and said, I will do this work, um, spirit gets excited and spirit goes, yeah, let's throw everything at him or her. And let's, let's, oh, you can do this. No problem. And sometimes spirit forgets that we have, you know, bodies and, you know, we're not <laughs> like, you know, this light body energy that doesn't, doesn't need food and rest and, you know, all these other things that we do need. And I think that's also a way for us to have a reminder about our own boundaries and our own um, mm -hmm. needs and our own, um, how we want to set up our life. Um, and that's really something that nobody ever talked to me about when I was learning about, you know, being a psychic, being a medium, when I was first starting out, nobody talked to me about boundaries or, you know, yep. how to keep, take care of myself or even that that was an issue or that that would be an issue. Um, I think that today people are much more cognizant of that and, 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 and really are um, more aware of those types of things. When I first started doing this kind of work, I, when I was 19, you couldn't find a medium or a psychic because they were all, you know, underground sort of, you know? And so now, now it's kind of, at least to me, it's, it's a little bit of the opposite. It's like, there's so many people that are, you know, proclaiming to be mediums or psychics, mm -hmm. um, but maybe don't have the the background or the the foundation to really be able to handle um, teaching someone else or, or or bringing someone else knowledge in that way. So I think you have to be careful um, that people are coming at it for the right reasons or coming to it for the right reasons. Um, that's me being cynical after thirty years of <laughs> over thirty years of doing this work, um, but. I do think it's great that there are so many people too, you know, I think that yeah. people are much more open-minded than they used to be. Um, you, you know, in Cincinnati, I know you're like North of Cincinnati, um, more, even more North of Dayton. And, but when I first started out in Cincinnati, there was nothing down here. There was no one to talk to about this stuff. <laughs> there was just, it was so, um, hidden and now we have this huge metaphysical community it's huge down there which is lovely um so there's there are pros and cons to all of those things and the discerning student the discerning person <laughs> you know you just have to kind of rely on your own discernment and on spirit's guidance to help you figure out what's best for you but you're always going to feel that Mm -hmm. You know, you're always going to yeah. have that sense of, yeah, this feels right. If you sit with it in your heart, it's mm -hmm. either going to feel right or it's not going to feel right. You know, yeah. yes. so you do what feels right. That was, I mean, literally, it's funny that spirit brings this up because I'm like, how do I, how do I move the conversation? So we talk about this. So I love that spirit did it for me um, because <laughs> it was probably either, it was definitely spirit speaks. So it was either spirit speaks one or spirit speaks two. And I remember coming in because I, I could not control at the time. I could not control how often spirit was coming to me. I was seeing people everywhere I went and it was driving mm -hmm. me bonkers. Mm -hmm. And <laughs> I will never forget sitting in that room and you were on the left and Joanne was on the right. Like I remember the moment and like this is how impactful it was to me because I learned the whole boundaries conversation from you in that moment. And you were sitting there and I said, but how do you stop them? And you just looked at me very frank, very blunt and said, yeah, tell them no. <laughs> yeah, you do. <laughs> I just went, I literally said to you, what do you mean? And you looked at me like, you stupid girl, did you not yeah. hear me? Sorry, I didn't mean for it to come across that way. No, 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 no. I didn't know it wasn't a bad thing, but it was like I literally, like literally, I just was not grasping. I you mean I can tell God no. I can tell them no. Like that was a huge epiphany for me in that moment. Huge. Yeah. Yeah, and, and I so, understand that. But it's but it's so based, Shelly, on what you were talking about before. Mm -hmm. You know, as women, 
um, as girl children, we're brought up to be polite, to be nice to people, to never really say, no, that's too much for me. We don't, we're not brought up to say no to anybody. At least I wasn't. I was brought up that if someone talked to you, you spoke to them. And, you know, if some man was bothering you, you didn't you know, you didn't say stop doing that. You just, you know, you just took it. You just allowed it to happen. Um, and I do think that, that we've become much more aware, um, as women, as we've, as we're moving through these times and moving through all of this energy that you just can't do that. You have to, you know, you have, your own, you have to protect yourself and allow yourself to be in a space and feel safe in a space and feel okay about saying no to people and saying no and not having necessarily a reason for saying no other than I just don't want to do that right now. Yeah. And, and not feeling need to explain. Exactly. You do not have to explain why you want to say no. You are mm-hmm. well within your rights as a human. Mm-hmm. Never mind what your gender is. Never mind any of that. You have a right to say no, period. Exactly. Absolutely. And you do have a right to say no to spirit. It's okay to yeah. say no because we're having we're having this experience in a physical body. There's a lot going on around us that's not necessarily... I mean, I believe everything is connected to our spiritual self and to our essence as a divine being. But, you know, being able to, you know, go pick the kids up from school, you know, that if I don't have time to do my meditation today because I got to be there for my kids, then you've got to find the line. Where's the line? Yeah, Yeah, I want to be doing my meditation and I want to sit with spirit, but I also really have a responsibility to these children that I brought into the world. So where's the line and who do I say no to? Well, I'm not going to say no to my kids because they're, you know, they're not able to negotiate the world without me depending on their age. So, you know, it it, it is a realization for a lot of people. I, I don't want to make fun of that at all because a lot of people have that realization of, oh, I don't have to do this. This Mm -hmm. is not required of me. What is required of me is that maybe I um, try to approach things with love and with humility rather than through my ego. You know, maybe that's a requirement. Um, And I don't know that anything else really is. (laughs) Yeah. It, it took me, it took me a long time to be able to understand what saying no to spirit was. I mean, the, the 30 days going live is something that I, I, I need to do, which is mm-hmm. why I agreed to do it. It doesn't mean I like it, but <laughs> I do know, I do know yep. that it's something that I needed to do. So I agreed to do it, but it doesn't mean I'm not going to sit there and cuss about it. Girl, I hear that. <laughs> <laughs> there have been many things I've done that I've went, well, I'm going to do it. I might not like it. And I might complain about it the whole time I'm doing it and I'm still going to do it, you know? So I get that, you know, but I also think too, Shelly, that you're at a place in your own understanding of your own connection to spirit and your own um, goals and, and that sort of thing that you know, intuitively what's right for you and what's just too much, you know, you know, intuitively, if spirit gives you something that you do have the right to say no, and Mm -hmm. that you can say, that's not, I I can't do that right now. Um, But letting people know that that is something to cultivate that, you know, allowing yourself to have those moments of saying no, that's, you know, sort of an epiphany for a lot of people. It was, it was definitely one for me. And that's one of the things that I continue to teach in my classes. Mm -hmm. You have to tell them, no, Mm -hmm. this is what I requested. And I'm not requesting more than that. Right. And just being able to set healthy boundaries. Mm -hmm. And I think one of the things that, not I think, I know (laughs) one of the things that I underestimated about my trip through mediumship was, I mean, even when I started the two-year program, Mm -hmm. I didn't know that I wanted to be a medium full-time. I didn't Mm -hmm. know that. I just knew that I needed to develop the connection. And these deeper, longer programs don't mean you have to be a medium on the other side. It just really develops your connection to spirit. Mm -hmm. Right. And learning to say no was very difficult for me Mm 
mm-hmm. because it was a learned thing. And so going into these programs, you know, humans have this ego, the egoic understanding of, oh, I'm going to be able to connect with spirit and I'll have mm-hmm. this thing. And it is a beautiful way for spirit to sometimes lull you into your spiritual journal, your spiritual journey gently. And then wham. <laughs> It's trial by fire. It is trial by fire. So I definitely teach my students the same thing. I'm like, you know, Rose taught me boundaries, 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 say no. Mm -hmm. And so, and my students, I look at them and they have the same look on their face that I had, which was, wait, what? I think, and I, like I said, I think I'm really kind of adamant about it now, Shelly, because nobody ever taught me that. Yeah. And honestly, looking back at my own journey as a professional medium, Um, I had to learn a lot of things on my own. I had, yeah, I went through a program. I went to Camp Chesterfield and I got taught certain things. Um, and I definitely used them and it was definitely worth going through that program totally. Okay. But I feel like a lot of the really important stuff was left out of my education. (laughs) Like, the important parts of things that were about cultivating your own soul. Okay. Yeah. How do you cultivate your own self? How do you, um, yeah, you can have a speaking relationship with spirit, but how do you have a deeper relationship with spirit? That's yes. something that nobody ever taught me. And I started to realize as I started to become busier and busier as you know, as a reader, as someone who was doing sittings with people all the time, that I had to, I had to know that, that that was something I really needed to get in touch with for myself. But by the time I was so busy, I didn't have time for it. Mm -hmm. It was like, I couldn't find a way to balance it. Um, And so for me, you know, I, I think that's one of the reasons that I had some health issues. And I think that's one of the reasons that eventually after those health issues hit that I had to step back and say, okay, I've done this for almost 30 years now. Um, as far as sitting with people and doing readings on a daily basis, (laughs) you know, readings, 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 um, that it was time to step back and say, okay, I need to cultivate that relationship with spirit that is just for me. Yeah. Um, that hasn't doesn't have anything to do with anybody else necessarily that has to do with Rose. Um, and that's kind of where I am now, you know, trying to figure out what that means and what that looks like. I think it would have been better if it would have been reversed. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but if it had come at the beginning of my relationship with spirit rather than now that I'm going into my chronedom. But that's okay. Spirit knows what spirit's doing. And so I trust the process. <laughs> and I, I try to go along. That all the time. Trust the process, Shell. Trust the process. Yeah. All is in divine order. You yeah. know, somebody came to the USCL, the church that I helped find here in, in Cincinnati once and gave this wonderful lecture on the, the, the phrase, all is in divine order. And that had been, that was, oh God, that was probably 25 years ago. But at that time, that was something I had never heard. And I went, is that true? Is everything always in divine order? And I really had to sit with that all the time because it didn't make any sense to me. Um, But now I truly believe that all is in divine order, that everything is happening in the time and in the way that it needs to happen. And yes, we have influence over that. Of course, we have influence over that. Um, And we have choices that we make. And whatever choices we make lead to another choice, which leads to another choice. Mm -hmm. And that is all in divine order. Everything is happening in the way that it needs to happen. So, you know, go with the flow, y'all. There you go. There's the big pearl of wisdom for the day. So that leads me to a question that I do want to ask. If you had someone who was just starting on their spiritual journey, knowing all the things that you know now for over Mm -hmm. 30 years, all of your wisdom and practice and mistakes and learnings and lessons. If there was one 
amazing, good, yummy, juicy piece of advice that you could give to someone who was just starting out, what would it be? Hmm. That's a really great question. And it's a really, it's a really hard question in terms of there's so much to know um, <laughs> and there is so much that is valuable, you know, but I also think if somebody was just starting out and, and just starting to explore their own relationship, the, the, the thing that I would probably tell them is remember who you are. Okay. Mm. Remember that you are a divine being that you have a divine connection to every other sentient being in the universe. That's why mediumship works. Mm -hmm. That's why we have relationships with other people. That's why we have a relationship with the divine. So if you continually go back to the idea, to the, to the, to the truth of you are a divine being then everything else to me is like a domino falling into place. Because if you truly believe that you're a divine being, then nothing is impossible. All of this stuff that we talk about magic and, you know, the fairy world and, you know, um, whatever it is, mediumship, talking to dead people, talking to the ascended masters, you know, whatever those pieces are for you, all of that's going to fall into place because you're going to believe and know at the core of your being that that is possible for you and you won't question it. You won't question the commitment. You won't question the connection that you have um, because you won't be sitting there going, well, that, that isn't me talking. That's somebody else talking. Or, you know, that isn't spirit talking. That's, that's just me making things up. No, you're a divine being. You have a divine connection. So why do you doubt yourself? Why are you constantly putting yourself in this place of um, fear, doubt, um, feeling like you're not enough. You are enough because mm -hmm. you're divine. Yeah. And Shelly, I can't tell you how many times I have to remind myself of that. Every day. I do. <laughs> you know, absolutely. And, uh, you know, they call it imposter syndrome now. Uh -huh. um, that was, that's like a, like a buzzword or whatever that a lot of people talk about now. Um, which I think is great because so many people suffer from it and so many people need to hear that it's normal and that they're not crazy and that they're not imposters. Um, but that's what it comes to. Imposter syndrome is, is a belief that you're not a divine being. It's the belief that you don't have what it takes to do X, Y, Z, whatever it is in your life <laughs> mm -hmm. um, that you're trying to create. Um, and we know as witches, as people who are working with energy in, in tangible ways, that we can create stuff, you know, that moving energy, witchcraft, magic, whatever you want to call it, is about moving energy in a certain direction and yeah. putting that energy to good use, right? Mm -hmm. um, at least that's how I look at it. Um, but that idea of how can I do that? That's not possible for me because I'm not enough. I'm, but you are, you're divine. If you weren't divine, you wouldn't be able to do that. Absolutely. Okay? So, so many people get hung up on the idea of, um, you know, especially people who come from a Christian background, you know, Jesus is the, the Christian ideal of the divine, right? Because he was human and he's in this human body and he's doing all these divine things. And Jesus said, everything that I do, you can do better. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so why do we question that? You know, and even if you don't come from that background, knowing that one of the ascended masters Many of the ascended masters have said that in many different ways, in different language, but it's the same truth. You have the power to do these things. So why are you limiting yourself? Why are you believing that you're not enough? 
So yeah, that's where I would start because it all starts with our own belief. I love our belief that. in ourself, our belief in the higher power that is within us. Um, it isn't anywhere else. It's right there. It's right with you. Mm -hmm. So start there. I love that because it's also the very first thing that you learn if you do any kind of Wiccan tradition or you do any kind of pagan tradition, know thyself. Yeah, absolutely. And that's a great, and that's a great way to, to look at. I mean, that's a, to me, that is what you're saying when you say I'm divine, know thyself, know yeah. thyself, know that you are the power itself, that you are the divine itself, that you are the magic itself. You're all of those things. So mm -hmm. now you just got to learn how to use it. Now you just got to learn, you know, what it, what works for you and that it's, it's going to fall into place. Agreed. We have a listener who just posted and said, because it's easier to lean into the ego. And that's true. It's mm -hmm. easier to believe all the bad things than it is to believe all the good things. You know, it is, it really is. And that's, that's really, unfortunately, that's kind of sad that it, that's the truth of being, but it's, that's the truth of being a human being. It you is. Know, and, and that's the challenge of being a human being, I think. Um, it is. And, and it takes us back into the childhood stuff, right? Mm -hmm. That if our parents taught us early on, your voice is important. Mm -hmm. We wouldn't feel this way as adults. We'd be like, cool, let me go do all these things. Right. Absolutely. And, and that's one of the reasons I think it's, it's, you know, a lot of people talk and I'm, I'm a mom, you're a mom, you know, my boys are 27 now. I know your children are older, mm -hmm. you know. I think that the younger generation that is coming now, um, a lot of people complain about, oh, we gave them trophies for everything. You know, we, you know, all of those kinds of things like, you know, th that they, um, they got things easily. Right. Um, I don't necessarily know that that's the case. I don't think that's the case. But one thing I do love about the younger generation is that they do have a sense I think of who they are in terms of being able to accomplish things yes. and not being, and not being afraid to be authentically themselves yes. um, and knowing that in doing that or having the confidence that in doing that and being their, their authentic self, that they're going to find their niche in the world. They're going to find their group. They're going to find their coven. They're going to find their, um, their friends, their family, their job, whatever it is that aligns with that. Yeah. And I don't think it's because anybody ever said to them from an energy standpoint, if you align yourself <laughs> with this kind of an energy, then this is what's going to happen. Nobody probably ever said that to them, but that's, you know, that's the understanding that they seem to be coming in with um, and that is being nurtured within their own, like, you know, age groups and stuff, um, which I think is so beautiful. The idea that we have this, this younger generation that really is accepting and loving of who people are at a core sort of essence mm -hmm. um, and want the world to be a beautiful place because everybody has something to contribute. Gosh, that's a, such a huge, huge thing. And I hope that they continue to believe that as they get older um, and change the world with that. Agreed. So we have a listener who, this is what they posted and this is amazing. Believing we are magic means we would have to believe there is more to us than what we are told there is. If we step outside the norms, we would need to accept our belief in magic, which means we would then be able to remember who we are. Ah, very interesting and very true, I think. Yeah. What, what, a, what, an, what an amazing insight. Thank you for sharing that. That was absolutely beautiful. It's true. Yeah. And it's one of the reasons why I know that I have to do the 30 days, right? It's stepping outside <laughs> because I'm ready for it. I know I'm ready for it. I've just mm -hmm. been too scared. And if spirit, you know, Merlin says, here's what I want you to do. Mm -hmm. Taskmaster. <laughs> my Merlin was always a taskmaster. And I, you know, I don't, I miss my Merlin. Um, I know he's still around. Um, and I always have the ascended master Merlin that you can, uh, you know, tap into too. But yeah, I mean, spirit can be taskmasters about things, different spirit guides and things like that. And 
I always believe that the, the, the spirit guides that show up for people are the ones that they most need at that time in their life. You know, they're the ones yeah. that are most important for them to be working with at that time. Um, so if you get the taskmaster for a while, it's because <laughs> it's because you really have some way that you're going to make an impact and you might not see the impact you know, as being huge or whatever it is, but the spirit knows that that impact is important and valuable. And so they push you, you know, yeah. they push you to do things and one, thank one God. Things, yeah. It can be difficult. <laughs> I mean, one of the things I love about my whole journey is that I can look back at everything and see how spirit was actually quite gentle with me in the beginning, although I felt like they were being very disruptive and very uncomfortable. They were actually yeah. being very gentle with me because, and I don't know if you remember this or not, but my very first mediumship spirit guide was a six foot hamster. I do remember. And, and I loved that. I love that so much. I know. Charlie was amazing. <laughs> I loved him. I miss, I mean, he's still around, but of course. You know, and I used to think in class, you know, why have I, why can't I meet my joy guide? No matter what I did, I could not meet my joy guide. Turns out Charlie was actually my joy guide. But because I was so terrified, so scared, I got the humorous Charlie to be to step in for my mediumship guide until it was time for me to really advance my skill set. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the, after I graduated my two-year program with you and Joanne, I agreed to, I wanted to repeat my second year because Chad was there. I wanted to learn mm -hmm. from Chad as well. Sure. And so during that, during that course of that year, that's when Charlie said, listen, your skills are beyond me. You really now have to go to your Merlin because he knows more than I do. That's where yeah. your magic lies. Yeah. And I mean, I cried. It was horrible. It happened right in the middle of class. And I'm like, where are you going? I get it, Shelly, the, the exact, I don't want to say the exact same thing happened to me, but that's what happened with my Merlin. Um, when I went to England uh, back in 2017, um, we went on this, this lovely tour of sacred sites in England that was gear, it was called, um, like, it was called something like, Merlin's tarot trip through, you know, England or something like that. So it was based on Arthurian legend. It was based on tarot work and um, getting, you know, into the, the deeper levels of um, spirituality in terms of, of, uh, of how that reflects in, in Arthurian tradition and those kinds of things. But the last, the last trip that we made was to, I, I can't even tell you the name of the place. Um, I can't remember it. But it, when I was standing on this hill, um, Merlin came to me and said, um, I need to leave you. You, you. You've learned all you need to learn from me. I have to go and move on and, and teach other people. Um, and you'll be fine without me. And I went, what? Yeah, yeah. I was just, and I came down off the hill and, you know, the tour guide who was very, both of the tour guides were very spiritual people, just lovely people. And one of them came up to me and said, oh, can you tell me about the, I could tell that you were having a really intense experience on the hill. And I was like, I can't talk about it right now. <laughs> like I ran, you know, like ran past her. And I spent like the whole evening, like in our bed, in, in our room, like crying and and, you know, meditating and trying. It's a period to of mourning. It is. And, it, and it's, it's a feeling of abandonment. It really is. That it's not abandonment. And I know that intellectually. Okay. Mm -hmm. I'm an adopted child as well. So adopted children, I believe, have abandonment issues from the get-go. I agree. Um, I have a child who's adopted. Yeah. So I, yes. Yes. It is a so, thing. So, you know. To have my most the the, the the guide that is really the closest to me say, "I'm leaving. Bye. Um, you're you'll be fine without me." I was devastated. I was mm -hmm. devastated, yeah. and I, I really it, it, I had to really work through that. I think I'm still working through that in some ways with my relationship with my guides and stuff. And of course, Mara has stepped into that position now. My joy guide who 
has told me, has finally told me, but she's been through all this training that she needs to go through. And she's now the master guide. She's now the one who's in charge of the, the, you know, all the other guides over there. And that was what, that was part of what her training was about. That was part of her journey was to learn that and to grow in that way. So we're growing together and that's what happens with your spirit people. They grow with you. Yeah. But it is, it's devastating or it can be devastating. And it shook my confidence. It shook my confidence a lot. So yeah, spirit's going to throw you some curveballs sometimes and say, Hey, you know, how are you going to do with this? How are you going to, are you going to give up or are you going to keep going? Are you going to keep your heart open to new possibilities? Are you going to remember that all is in divine order and everything is as it should be? Um, Mm -hmm. Or are you going to let that completely pull the rug out from under you and completely throw you off? Um, so yeah, there's a lot of lessons in those things. So there are, if you're Merlin, my Merlin, they're teaching us stuff. They always do. <laughs> yeah, it was, I mean, it was, I, I felt like I was abandoned just like you had said. And it took me a couple of weeks before I would even go into meditation to go, okay, who's replacing him? Like what's happening here? Mm-hmm because I was devastated and I kept like going into meditation and calling to him, Charlie, Charlie, Charlie. Right. Right. Yeah. And he said to me, he he would come to me and he finally put his arm around me and he went, you have to stop. Yeah. I know that you, you cannot, like I, you are far beyond what I can teach you. You have to learn from someone who is a true master and really understands this. And I'm like, well, who is that supposed to be? And that's when this Merlin steps in and he's got the long white beard and (laughs) he wears this. Like when I see him, he's got this like beautiful, majestic purple cloak Mm -hmm. and it's gorgeous, but it has all of these alchemy symbols, Rose, that like move all the time. They never stop moving. So they flash, they come in, they come out and Uh all on this deep purple tapestry that he's wearing. And I'm like, don't you get tired of that moving all the time? <laughs> and he's like, would you ask me a question that makes sense? Would you yes, ask me? Because yes. you know? that's how my Merlin always was. I would say stuff, you know, I'd ask questions yes. like about, you know, and he's like, why does that matter to you? <laughs> it's not like, you know, but it's, it, it is, it's, um, it's a journey. It really you know? is. It's, it's a continuous journey. And I, that's the other thing I think I would tell people about anything that has to do with spirituality. Your spiritual path is a journey that you're going to be taking your whole life. It's not going to ever be at an end. Okay. You're never going to know everything. You're never going to know too much. You're never going to, you know, get to a point where you are not learning um, and growing as a spiritual being. Um, and when you think, I think when you think that you've gotten to a, the end of a cycle, you just sort of spiral around and go deeper. And that's why I think the spiral symbol is so um, mm. important and so important to me, but is also a really important symbol in magic and alchemy and, you know, and in lots of different traditions, that spiral reminds us that we're still on the journey. We're just going, we're not going in circles. We're going deeper. We're going deeper. And that's, to me, that's, you know, kind of mind blowing that there's so much still to learn. And at the same time, bring it on. I'm good with that. (laughs) You know, I always say I'm a lifetime learner. That's what I love to do. So I know I just said this somebody the other day. I'm like, listen, if I could get paid to be a lifetime learner, I would be (laughs) right. I would never stop. Somebody pay me to go to school. I'll be happy to do it. Just don't teach me math. I don't want math. No math. Yeah, no math. I'm with you. No (laughs) math. I'm good. No math. Um, so one of our listeners said, um, she was talking about this, listening to us talk about the journey, right? And she didn't know there was such a thing as a joy guide. And she's like, oh, I'm shook. I was not ready for this information. And so <laughs> then we were talking about the journey, right? And she, this is what she writes, new journey starting in three, two, bam. <laughs> I love that. 
I love Here's that. some fun stuff for you. Happy journeying. What? And yes. that's how that's how your spiritual journey goes. Absolutely. You and don't it, know that they happening. were doing the countdown. You just get the bam. <laughs> yeah. And I, I think you're absolutely right. And, you know, it's funny that that she says that I just had sort of a bam moment, you know, yesterday when I was, you know, I, I, I was out of town for two weeks, you know, so the whole time I was in the Netherlands, which is where I was, um, I wasn't meditating, I wasn't doing anything spiritual, <laughs> you know, we were just walking around looking at flowers and eating food. And, you know, we were having a great time. And the pictures were amazing. Uh, hey, I, we had a really great time. It's beautiful, beautiful country. Um, but when we got back, you know, I'm like, oh, I gotta do I gotta get back into my spiritual practice. I gotta get back to meditating. So yesterday was really the first day that I actually sat for a meditation for a, you know, a long period of time. And I got so much, like, it was like, boom, all this stuff was downloading almost like, like, you know, and I was like, whoa, 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 let's all take a step back. <laughs> let's all like, hang on. I don't know that I'm ready to like, get all this stuff right now. So it'll be really interesting for me to see how that evolves. And so the listener, the person that, that wrote about the joy guide, Hey, now, you know, you have one, guess what? <laughs> your, joy guide is gonna, uh -huh, your joy guide is going to be like, follow me, talk to me, come play with me, do these things with me. Just like my new journey is going to be, um, you know, looking at this, this new information that, that I've been given and, and having spirits say, what are you going to do with that? What are you going to do with it? Um, and how are you going to integrate that into your life? And how is that going to become a part of who you are? It already is a part of who you are. If it comes to you, um, you're just, I always like to say, you're kind of remembering what you need to know. Yes. Um, so good for you, I, joy guide. Yay. yay. And I have done, I've done a poor job of making sure that people know everything that you have done. Oh so, my God. <laughs> See, I know that you don't like talking about yourself and you like almost got me to where I didn't. <laughs> so other than, so you think you can be a medium, which is an amazing book. I love it. Thank love, you. love, love that book. I actually use it. And I'm going to correct you because it's called you, so you Want to Be a Medium. Be a medium. Yeah. Yes, so you want Just to be a medium. Just anybody Sorry. wants to look for it. No, no, it's so totally bad. My, my apologies. I, and I know all. that. It's, here, it's like right here on the floor because I use no, it when I'm teaching. I get um, it. And so it truly is an amazing book. It walks you through some meditations to meet the different guides. Um, and I talked about all the different guides in my spirit guides 101 class that I'm going yeah, through now because awesome. there are so many different types. Mm -hmm. Um, and of course, you know, the different types is going to believe on what you choose to believe, right? Mm -hmm. So in spiritualism, we have the inner band, the outer band, all the different kinds. Um, mm -hmm. and you know, just being able to meet so many different ones there. I mean, there are spirit guides for everything, literally everything. Oh yeah. And if you need if you need something in your life, you can ask for a specific guide to come in and help you with that specific thing. And they may not stay with you forever. Correct. They may not be a part of your permanent band of guides, but they'll, you can definitely, um, you know, ask that, that somebody be give, you know, come to you and you get the kind of guidance that you need for the time that you need it. Um, so I think that's, you know, one of the great things about spirit is that I always feel like I'm not alone. I always feel like I, somebody's got my back. You know, I'm never by myself. I always have my guides. I always have the opportunity to tune into other energies and to be with other energies that are, that are doing good in the universe. So, you know, that's, that's kind of comforting. I love that. So we have somebody, the listener wanted the link for the book. You can go to, you can definitely go to Amazon and find it. Um, well, that's what I tried to post. Yeah. I don't know that StreamYard will let me post the link. That's totally but fine. yeah, if you go to Amazon um, and look it up, hopefully it let that link post. It will. It. And if you, if you can't get to Amazon for some reason, go to Llewellyn.com. Yeah. Um, Llewellyn is a huge publisher of metaphysical information. And um, if you don't know Llewellyn already, you need to know Llewellyn because they have lots of great books and lots of great um, resources. Um, 
So that's one book that I have. I also wrote about the Archangel Metatron for anybody who's interested in angels. Um, he's a good guy to know. Um, and so I have a book about that. I have a couple of books that are no longer in print. Um, but yeah, one of these days I'm hoping to get another book um, out there. And who knows, maybe this stuff that they gave me yesterday is going to be part of that. I don't know. We'll see how it unfolds. <laughs> So what else are you doing? Like, I know that you have, you have been acting in plays and doing. I have, I've writing. been doing actually a lot of playwriting. Um, <laughs> and I actually have a play that I wrote. I started writing uh, probably about seven years ago. And it is about the Fox sisters, the sisters who um, are the, the, the girls that began um, modern spiritualism. Yep. So it is their, it is a take on their story um, written from mostly from Maggie's point of view, Maggie Fox, Ma Margaret Fox, who was one of the sisters um, who encountered a spirit in their home and began to communicate with that spirit. And from that, the religion and the philosophy of spiritualism, as we know it today, grew from that. And spiritualism was huge in the late 1800s and into the early 1900s. It, yeah. was, it was a wildfire spreading everywhere. And, you know, we sometimes, um, because it's, it's been in the past, a lot of people don't know that much about it. But um, I'm hoping um, to have my play produced here in the next year or so. Um, so I'm hoping that um, that will also spark some interest in, in spiritualism um, and in the idea of spirit in general. Um, but yeah, so I've been working and I worked on that because Maggie Fox, who is that energy, wouldn't leave me alone. She just kept coming to me and saying, I want you to tell this story and this is the way I want you to tell it. And you need to write this down and it needs to be a play. And, a, and I was like, really? Like, I you know. cannot wait to see it. Cannot wait. So, yeah. So that's been a big um, focus for me recently. And in order to have that, have that opportunity to produce the play, I also have been, you know, sort of re, um, reshaping my relationships with theaters and things around this, this community, because I have been active in the theater for many, many years in the Cincinnati area, but you definitely have to know people. You have to, <laughs> you know, you have to, um, make, you have to make those connections and network and, and, and keep your, your toe in the water, so to speak. So, um, so I'm excited about that. I'm excited that Maggie is going to get to tell that part of her story. Um, it'll be interesting to see how spiritualists actually react to it. Um, because there's always a villain in a story, there has to be a mm -hmm. villain. And so, yeah. you know, there, um, Unfortunately, in, in, in Maggie's story, at, the, at least in this interpretation of it, there is a villain and it's, it may be somebody that um, other people would not consider to be a villain, but that's okay. <laughs> so, and, and here's the thing. It was her story to tell. Right. And right. It absolutely. Have to like it. Exactly. So we'll see how it goes, but I'm excited about that. I'm excited about the work that I've been doing as a Mor Morgan Le Fay priestess in terms of my own um, service to um, the goddess. Um, and so I'm hoping that um, your, your, your new thing, your new temple sounds very interesting to me, um, Shelley. So I might have to check that out and oh, thank you. Um, yeah. And and see what that's all about because I feel uh, the need to have group energy um, in mm -hmm. terms of that, rather than trying to do that all on my own as a, you know, I started as a pagan, as a solitary pagan, you know, however many years ago, that was even before, that was even before spiritualism. So, <laughs> you know, I started that way and I never had a group, you know, I never learned from a group. I learned from books. I learned from experiences. Um, and 
now that I'm getting older, I'm feeling this great urge to be with women more, be yes. with other women and sharing with other women and not in a leadership capacity. So necessarily in, in a capacity of everyone sharing responsibility, you know, everybody sort of sharing a space and, and enjoying and, and learning and growing um, in that way. So that is something that I'm also pursuing um, in term, well, pursuing, I guess that's the wrong word, but I'm also interested in opening that up more. So um, we'll see how that turns out too. So yeah, awesome. those have been the things that really have um, been important and vital. Um, and my writing, I, I do write, you know, I've been writing a lot of things that are perhaps not, um, they're not how-to books, <laughs> um, but they are, I think, spiritually inspired poetry and um, things like um, invocations and um, um, a lot of those types of things that um, are still connected to spirit, but in a different way, you know, that's not necessarily about telling somebody else how to do something, but is more about um, sharing an experience um, in in a way that maybe somebody else can relate to. So, yeah, that's me in a nutshell. Yay! <laughs> an amazing human being. Like I literally could probably spend the rest of the afternoon talking to you. I, I know, and I could spend the rest of the afternoon talking about myself because I'm so humble. So Didn't humble you say you I was? Yeah, yes, mm. you are. I don't know. It um it it literally all the things that you. I mean, if I, if I really start thinking about it, I'll start crying. So I don't want to do that, but I take it very seriously when I teach and when I do things, because I know that I carry it as a very important responsibility that I get to stand on your shoulders, on Joanne's shoulders and on Elaine's shoulders. And that will make me cry. Um, being able to carry forward the beautiful things that each of you have taught me about how to be a medium things that Chad has taught me about how to be a medium. And I have these four amazing teachers who I get to stand on these shoulders and represent this collective learning and say, here's what they taught me. And let me bring this on to more people, whoever, whoever wants to listen to me. And I am, I just have a wordless amount of gratitude for each of you for all the things that you helped to shape me into. And I am just beyond grateful that you were one of my teachers. Wow. Beyond yes. grateful. I appreciate that so much. And it means a lot to me to, to hear that, but it means more to me to see somebody who has been a part of those classes or been a part of that, that part of my journey and who's going on to, to, go out into the world and to spread that joy that spirit is. Um, oh, that's, amazing. that's, you know, to me as a teacher, that's why you teach. Mm -hmm. That's why you, that's why you, that's why you share everything because you want other people to have those beautiful experiences. And that's what teaching is. It's sharing the information so that other people can have these incredible experiences that you've had. And we don't have them every day and we don't no. have them every moment of every day, no. but we have them. Mm -hmm. And when it happens, there's such power and beauty and, and just awesomeness in those moments that, it, it makes me grateful and humble and all of those things um, to be a part of that and to be allowed to be a part of that. So thank you for doing the work that you're continuing to do um, and for being, a, a like I said, a great advocate for spirit. Thank you. It is definitely my honor to be of service. And you know, I, I think people may think that it's cheesy that I say that, but it's, it's the God's honest truth. I am truly honored mm -hmm. to be of service and do the work that I do. I wouldn't, I wouldn't change my journey. There is nothing about this. I would change Would I have liked to have done it while I was younger, maybe, Ooh. but I don't know that I would have been as open when I was younger as I am right now. So, mm -hmm. you know, and challenges 
there are challenges to it at any stage in life, yes. you know, and everyone's going to have their own unique challenges in their spiritual journey because you're a unique person and your life experiences and your life, um, the way it's set up is unique. So everybody's going to have that, you know, yeah. um, but embracing it and allowing it, that's the first part. That's the first step is to say, okay, I'm, I'm open to do this. I'm open. I'm ready. I'm, I'm willing to learn what spirit wants me to learn. Um, yeah. and that's a huge thing. So, yeah. Well, at least you get to see the product. <laughs> I do. <laughs> and I'm so proud of that. I am so proud of my product. Not Thank just you very you. much. I'm very, very proud of you. Deeply. Yes, absolutely. So grateful. Absolutely. So grateful. Thank, Thank you so you much, Rose, you. for being on here with me. This has oh, been absolutely to. amazing. And I, I cannot wait to see you post that your play has been picked up. This is where it's going to be produced. This is where you can come see it because I truly believe that that story re needs to be retold. It needs to be put out there. More people need to discover spiritualism again, which is why I've thrown this temple out there. Mm -hmm. It is, you know, we need to step into one source, whatever you want to use it, whatever pantheon mm -hmm. you want to look at it as and just embrace spirit, bring it into our lives. Remember, we don't need four walls to put us in. Nope. And be our connection, be our divine selves every minute of every day. Absolutely. Wonderfully said. Thank you. Thank you so much for being on with me. I absolutely love and adore you. I Thank love and adore you, so you too, honey. Thank we you. need to get together in real life. So I would love that. I would <laughs> love right. that. All right. So thank you to all the listeners for being yes. here. Catch you all. Look, it's 111. We're ending at 111. Woo! Woo Hi, Metatron. Metatron's very uh, connected to the 1111. So perfect. perfect. <laughs> thank you so much. Have a wonderful afternoon, everybody. Bye, everybody. Take care. <laughs>